Generators to full load. Look, there must be something we can you can do. It's too dangerous. Oh, great. Igniter's charged. Field strength nominal. <gasps> too late. Engine valves running. Pumps open. Ignition sequence starts. Dear God. We have ignition. All engines lit and at nominal thrust. We are going for full burn. Get Petra to define our status. Yes, Squad Melody. Uh, all systems are nominal. And what course are we on? Uh, Golf 49.5, Bravo 16.3, uh, uh, accelerating at 269k per second. And we're still accelerating at. I think we're going away from Amalia. Right, at a rate of 280k per second. Uh huh, that's correct. But why, Daniel? Why? I don't know. Something There was an announcement. Something about ION's intervention code or something. It was taking us to a safe place as defined by the services standard order. Daniel, don't say anything and don't do anything. You didn't say or do anything before. Look where that got us. Tell Petra to restore lift functions. And how does he do that if it's not meant to say Melody. anything? OK, I'm doing it now. Well, that's Natasha's career up the spout. What? Well, she's whining and dining on a moon while the ship's careering off into space. You're not going to be whiter than white, are you? Bongo drums in the dome while a space cadet and his girlfriend man the bridge. Huh? Hmm. Come on! Hold on. Daniel, try the SIM access code on Alpha 38. I've done that already. Oh. Uh, look, look, try, try the PPF code on ICI 41. Yeah, that's the one you're a star. Access to lifts not available till launch maneuver is complete. Oh. Access to lifts Look, not available. No they're just going to have to wait. What's the places do you think you're playing at? Ah, we're on course in a totally standard service manoeuvre to a lower radiation density environment. Why did you send us to Paul Burner? Why? I didn't. Petra did. She's a thinker, isn't she? What? Well, be quiet, Melody. Look, she, she invoked an intervention code. There was nothing I could do about it. I'm so sorry. Oh, will be. Where's Drummond? Stuck in a lift. Get him. Oh, get out of the way. Petra, give me Commander Drummond. This is a very grave situation, Commander. Captain and first officer whining and dining on some minor moon while a space cadet yes, runs off with the ship. Yes, thank you, Professor. We've already thought of that. All lifts now fully operational and accessible. Oh. Oh, well, that's a move in the right direction, anyway. Pardon? Well, we'll see what happens on the bridge, won't we? <laughs> oh, I'll leave you to it, then. Yes. Good night. Don't worry. Never will be back to normal once Mercedes and Drummond get up here. Oh, I have every confidence in Daniel. <laughs> every confidence? That's what I think they call the triumph of hope over experience. Uh, where do you think you're going? For a drink. Oh, come on, Mercedes. Look, I'm not the ship's captain. There's no problem. We're on a perfectly safe course. Yes, away from Amalia, away from the ship's captain and Fimbo. Yes. Well, what do I tell Charles? Hmm. Tell him the truth. Tell him I'm in the bar. I'm in the bar. Oh, Victoria. Victoria, do us a favour and tell Gabby that we're not going to Saturn. She's frightened to go back to her cabin in case Daniel goes to full burn again. No, we're not going to Saturn. There you are. Worse we're luck. Going to Himalaya. Hmm? Well, at least we will be when we sorted ourselves out. We've only just left Himalaya. Yes, Gabby. But we're travelling in a prograde orbit at 300k per second, and Himalaya is travelling at 200k per hour in a retrograde motion. If you remember your basic navigation, the stern chase is always the longest one. I don't want to remember my basic navigation. God, I wish I was on Callisto. 16 days, eh? I'll give me plenty of time to think about Talent Unlimited. Is that all you're bothered about? Captain Kavitsky's going to be really fed up. Nonsense! She's going to be roistering with old Jolly Bell's Finbo. And don't you try telling me they're not in love. 
I noticed these things. Well, everybody else noticed some weeks ago. Himalia will be their honeymoon. Oh, give over, Byron. Where are you and Jean-Francois going for your honeymoon, Victoria? Mimas, Enceladus, Phoebe or Dione. You don't have to go to Earth Moon like all those other boring married couples seem to these days. Well, I haven't really thought about it. <laughs> Just so long as you're together, huh? Did she indicate when she might be back from the bar? Not really. Petra, get me Mercedes Page. Mercedes Page not available. She is treading on very thin ice. She does realize that every second we spend hurtling at 300k a second on this pro-grade course will take hours to claw back. Yes, I think she knows that very well. Right, Mr. Welling. Let's see if we can't find out exactly where we are and where we're going, eh? Supposed to know. Know what? Never mind, just act normal. What did I say? Just keep quiet. Did I say something wrong? Hey, Victoria. Ow! Oh. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Victoria. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's not until tomorrow. You are behaving like a silly, jealous schoolgirl. Jealous? <laughs> That's rich coming from you. Just because Natasha's put your nose out of joint, you've decided oh. you're going to put the safety of every person on this ship at risk. I have told you a million times we're on a perfectly safe course. How do you know when you haven't checked? I have checked. And Drummond has, hasn't he? He hasn't got your expertise in navigation. Oh, rubbish. Anyway, if it's safety we're talking about, Charles, please remember who's been making the cock-ups round here recently. Mm? Well, first there was that little matter of going straight into a meteor storm, wasn't there? Well, I suppose actually that's a mistake anyone could have made. Anyone too pig-headed not to have a trained navigator on the bridge with them? Yes, all right. And then there was the little problem of Fimbo's EVA, wasn't there? You are behaving very badly, Mercedes, and you know it! Do I? You are being unprofessional. Look, Charles, not long ago, Captain Kavitsky banned me from the bridge, and as far as I know, that ban is still official. Oh, only when you find it convenient. You've been back up there several times since. But I would be behaving highly unprofessionally if I was to disobey Captain's orders now. Mercedes! Unless we find a course to intercept with Amalia very quickly, mm -hmm. Natasha, Captain Kavitsky is going to be the laughing stock of the entire space service. Then we'll have to hope you find us a course very soon, shall we? Mercedes, call in. Uh, no. Good morning, Professor. Victoria Frobisher calling Comsec. Petra. Victoria. Professor. Have I called at a bad time? No, not at all. You're up bright and early. Yeah. Uh, can you join me in the lab in a few minutes? Yes, of course I can. Be with you as soon as I can. Thank you. Oh, Victoria. Yes? <clears throat> oh. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> happy birthday Is to you. Is it your birthday? You. Yes. Well, many happy returns. Thank you. <laughs> Petra, get me Mercedes Page. Mercedes Page not available. Yeah. Well, actually, I was just thinking on going on a five-mile hike. <laughs> or maybe go on a little shopping spree, and then perhaps have a little trip with my friend Timmy. Oh, he'd like that. But then I said to myself, no tranquility, it's much nicer staying in here. <sighs> a space prisoner, that's what I am. Well, you can move about on Gantry, too, can't you? <sighs> Whoopee, I can hardly contain myself. Oh, well. I just bought this present in for Victoria. I hear we all in a bit of a pickle. No, not really. Has Daniel blown it? <laughs> no. He's handling the situation admirably. Victoria was talking of calling up Jean-Francois. Really? I know what you said to me, and I've kept my mouth shut like you asked. But I think she ought to know what he's been up to. Why is that? Because he's a bastard, and the sooner she knows that, the sooner she can get him out of her life. It's her birthday, Melody, and
and she thinks he's gonna call her, but he isn't. He might. Look, everyone knows about it except her. She won't thank you for that when she finds out. When is he going to stop messing up our lives? If you're not going to tell her, I will. No, let's look There you are! Hi! Hi. So, how's the birthday girl? I'm fine. Busy, you know. <laughs> Victoria, you are always working. <laughs> I've just been showing Professor Brennan this. Oh! Very nice. We're looking at spectra from different angles. Oh. Wow! Pretty lights. <laughs> Keep him sweet, Victoria. Daniel's having a tough time on the bridge. Well, this is for you. Oh, Melody, you shouldn't have. Well, I did. Or well, at least me, Sarah and Fiona did. <gasps> well, Sarah says to apologise. She's gone to a seminar and she'll be along later. Oh, that's sweet of her. Melody, you can't give me this. It's one of your best jackets. Oh, well, it's the nicest thing you've got, so... <laughs> no, I couldn't possibly take it. Anyway, it looks better on you than it does on me. <laughs> not anymore, Victoria. Mothers-to-be shouldn't be prancing around in spangly jackets. Why ever not? Oh, I just don't, do they? And besides, it's a bit... kind of better check. <laughs> it's beautiful. I could I Oh, please, take it. It'll make me happy. Thank you. Are you coming to the club tonight? I don't think so. Oh, um, come on, you've got to. Jim's concocting a lethal Turkish cocktail, especially. <laughs> That's sweet of him. So does that mean you'll come? Yeah, OK. Good. Well, I'll see you at eight. All right. Yeah. Have you told her yet? Look, don't call me. Remember what we said. Something wrong? Well? Oh, I've gone through the alternatives as best I can. Oh, it's years since I've done practical navigation. This is complex stuff. We're going back to Ganymede. Yes, we cross the orbital path in 14 hours. That'll give them a surprise. Landfall on Pacify 48 hours after that. We can't go back to Pacify. We can't just turn up there without our captain and first officer. Yes, I know. It looks so bloody careless, doesn't it? You'll be blamed as much as anyone, Commander. Bongo drums in the dome. Charles, I have done everything I can. I've computed an intercept course that'll take 47 hours. 47. Well, given the fact it takes 16 days to chase Amalia, I think I've done all right. I've computed a solution, an intercept of Amalia at this Jovian longitude. Petra's was very impressed. Well, then. Well, we have to go through Jupiter's magnetic field and the Europa flux tube. Oh, we've done that before. Charles. I am the only qualified service officer on board this ship. I've already been without sleep for nearly 48 hours. I'm doing nothing without Mercedes' help. Talk to her, then. Me? Yeah. She'll listen to you. But that's what she's been waiting for. You remember the Galaxy Girls? Brennan loved them. It really made his eyes light up. Galaxy Girls, eh? Well... Mom, who are they? Dancing girls with plunging necklines and minuscule miniskirts. Jim, you can't possibly condone this. I'm not saying that I approve of it. Too much. Galaxy girls, right? Mercedes, yes? have you seen the Galaxy girls? Oh, what, the bouncing bimbets? Yes, they're perfectly hideous. Well, Byron's singing and reviving them. Oh, good God. Oh, I know. Tell Charles, tell Charles. He'll be thrilled. He'll cheer him up if nothing else does. Really? Do you think you'd really enjoy them? Uh-huh. God, how sordid. Yeah, OK. I'll talk to her. Remind her she needs to put in the hours and have seven. <laughs> right then, if you'll excuse me. Drummond, mm. I've no doubt it seems odd, me having to ask you to talk to my fiance. Oh no, stormy, passionate relationships are bound to have their ups and downs. They have their ups as well, do they? Byron Wilkinson calling Comsen. Petra? Professor Brullen, I've just had a great idea for the talent unlimited extravaganza. For what? The talent show on Saturday. Bring back the Galaxy Girls. Mr. Wilkinson? Yeah? Go away. Petra, give me Victoria for Overshire. Professor. You all right? Yeah, is there a call? Call? I thought perhaps there might be a call from Alan Five. Oh, no, sorry. I thought perhaps I could buy you a birthday drink later on. Well, thank you. And so, ladies and gentlemen, if you put your hands together for our trusted tour operator and acting captain, Daniel Weatherby. 
We hope you've had a pleasant trip with Weatherby Tours. Thank you. <laughs> so, where are you taking us this time, Daniel? Aerial 9, is it? Oh, shut up, Jim. No, no, seriously. It's going to be really boring when we get our old captain back. We won't get nearly enough exercise. Not going to acceleration stations all the time. <laughs> Just you try sitting in the driving seat, Jim Hawkins. We'll probably all end up in a black hole. Is this coriander? I completely refuse to do it, Byron. It's totally sexist. It is not sexist. And besides, you've got all the right credentials. I beg your pardon? You know what I mean. Well, I'm not doing it. Right, Gabby. Melody, you'll do it, won't you? What, Gabby? Be a galaxy girl. Dear, I am a galaxy girl. I think I can go as far as to say I was the original galaxy girl. There you are then, Byron. Well, yeah, all She's right. She's got all the right credentials. All right? Of course you have, but I don't think you should do it. Really, Daniel? Why is that? Yeah, why is that? Because you're six months pregnant. Is it that much? Good heavens. That doesn't mean to say I've lost my voice. No. Mm. Come on, Mercedes. We're all sick of this. You were supposed to be on my side. Since when did Mercedes Page get so petty? Since he failed to support me against Kovitsky. You're paranoid. Oh, he just loves winding me up. It's the only way you can cope with his jealousy. Anyway, I'm sick of it. Look, I'm in Compsen at ten hundred hours on my own. Why don't you just pop in for a chat? <laughs> if you think I'm going to fall for that one, you've got enough. All right, it's all right. Just thought you might like to do a couple of hours and have seven. That's all. Yeah. Victoria, mm. Hi. you know the, um, the jacket that I gave you this morning? It's beautiful. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. Well, it's just that I was wondering. Mm, you want it back. <laughs> no, <laughs> not exactly. I was just wondering if I could borrow it for one night. It's Byron starting up the Galaxy Girls yet again, would you believe? Of course you can borrow it. You know where it is. Thank you. Mm. Have you heard from John Paul's father? Yeah. Hey, no, not lately. Get a copy. No, get it. Hey, you can't do it. Look, um, Victoria, can I? I get would you copy. come with me? Um, somewhere quiet. I, I really think I should talk to you. Just about shop. Yeah. Hey, Chris Darwin. Safe turn angle is 174 degrees using a Ganymede impact parameter of 128 mm. k. All right. Well, it's a calculated risk, but. Go for it. Oh, God, I'm glad you're back. Mercedes? Oh, good afternoon, Chuck. Mm. We're just doing the final calculations for you now. I'll leave you in peace then, let you get on with it. Yes, thank you, if you would. Petra, check flight plan file by Commander Drummond and um, myself. Run job on maximum priority. Mercedes? Mm hmm. Thank you. Yes, well, I'll never get Nav 7 if I don't put my hours in on. So sorry. I wasn't going to tell you, but Tranquility was threatening to tell you herself, and I thought that this situation is horribly familiar, isn't it? And everybody knows. No, not quite. And does everybody know how long? Oh, not long after he got there, according to Tranquility. Inbo says that affection can't survive in space. He says space is not for relationships, it's for individuals. Oh, I think that's rubbish. I don't know. Victoria. Just because Jean-Francois is a bastard. Thank you for telling me, Melody. Must have taken a lot of courage. The pain does go away eventually. Do you want me to stay with you? Or do you want me to go? No, I'll be all right. <laughs> Dog. The problem is that just trying to be relaxed makes me tense. Yeah, well, just concentrate on deep breathing, huh? And unclench your fists, Byron. Man, this place is full of loonies. Well, what am I going to do about Victoria? 
What am I going to say to her at the party? I don't know. Party? What party? Look, you just be quiet or you go back to Gantry too. As if that wasn't enough, there's, there's Melody. I mean, she's not going to be happy not being a galaxy girl. What's a galaxy girl? It's a song and dance act, lovey. I need recruits. Melody's Byron, out of the question. You can't concentrate if you're gabbling all the time. Now go back to sleep, huh? Okay. Hey, I can sing. Hmm? They used to call me the Lark of Island Five. Jim. Great, you're here. Listen, you and Daniel have to talk to Melody. Tell her she can't be a galaxy girl. I've got just the thing standing right in front of me. Ah, you've done some splendid work here, Victoria. We'll get some director's time on the phased array, tighten up these carbon complex confidence limits once we get to pacify. Whatever's the matter? <laughs> I'm so sorry. She's devastated, Daniel. Poor kid. She's probably not going to enjoy her birthday party very much, is she? I don't think she's going to come to her birthday party. Oh, it's awful. Look, he can't just be allowed to get away with all this. Well, it looks like he already has. Hey, aren't you just the slightest bit pleased you ended up with me? Hmm? I haven't ended up with you, Daniel. I haven't ended up with anybody. You're just my friend. Get your tickets here for Weatherby Tours. Next trip to Parkinson Star departs in five minutes. Jim, will you leave him alone and will you stop poking fun at him, will you? All right, all right. Hi, Jim. Hi. Sorry I'm late. I've been relaxing with Christoph. Oh. oh, God. Hi, Melody. Sorry about, you know. Sorry about what, Byron? Well, you know, you can be a galaxy girl, of course, when all this is over. You have to admit, it would look a bit silly right now. And anyway, Tranquility here has volunteered to take your place. Huh? Uh huh? Are you telling me I can't be a galaxy girl? Um, Jim. Sorry, what? I thought it sounded much better coming straight from the horse's mouth. D Daniel, no, what did you do with me, mate? This is a, a conspiracy. None of you want me to be a galaxy girl. Nobody said that, Melody. No, but that's what you're thinking, isn't it? Basically, I'm not attractive enough anymore to be a galaxy girl. Melody, sweet. Well, get off from me, you bastard. Look, you Mel old bastard. Melody. <laughs> Byron. Yes? If Melody wants to be a galaxy girl, she should be a galaxy girl, OK? okay. Otherwise, I might just spatter your head over the galaxy. Yes. Right, there we are. That should do it. Hmm. Course alteration in three hours, 40 minutes. Oh, well, I suppose you'd better tell Charles. Hmm. Petra, get me Charles Brennan. Professor Brennan, not available. Oh, charming. Must be my fault. Spending too much time on my work and not enough time on him. Nonsense. I must have done something wrong. I wish you'd told me he was unhappy. He'd given me some sort of a clue. Maybe he did, and, and I just didn't even notice. Toria, for heaven's sake. I should have gone to him. I should have gone to him at series. I, I shouldn't have I shouldn't have let my pride and ambition stand in the way. Victoria, this is not your fault. Of course it's my Victoria. fault. Victoria. You are dependable and loyal and brave. You are the hundred of that bloody Frenchman. You are the hundred of anybody on this ship. <laughs> 